Hey, what's up you guys? It's Lexi DIY and welcome or welcome back to another video. So today we are tackling or at least starting to tackle the most frustrating project I have ever done in my entire life. We need to rip up and replace the sunroom subfloor. But first I put up some plastic and I just use painter's tape all the way around and I also, you can't really see me doing it, but I'm taping it to the floor so that it's creating a barrier um, so that none of the dust or particles from us, you know, sawing the floor and ripping it up are going into the rest of the house. Um, and we are wearing masks and everything just to make sure that, you know, we're not breathing any of this in. But what I'm doing is I'm just cutting with a saw and I have it set to the depth of the plywood, which happened to be three fourths inches in here. And I'm cutting little sections out. We did turn the electricity off. And then after I cut the sections, um, Dustin would rip them up. And thank goodness he is uh, the muscle behind this project because it was, I tried to rip a small piece up and I, I could not um, because I'm pretty weak. But anyway, the reason that we turned the electricity off is because we didn't really know, like obviously there's outlets and um, you know lights and stuff in here. So we didn't really know like what wiring was in the floor or what we were really looking at uh, when we opened this up. So we're only doing little sections at a time and that also made it a lot easier to actually rip it out because the larger sections proved to be pretty tedious. Um, and we also have HVAC under here. So I didn't want to accidentally cut into that. Also a little like disclaimer of why we had to do this if maybe this happens to be the first video of mine that you're coming across. So there were actually hardwood floors in this room and it was quite the controversy when I ripped them out but I had to um, because some of them had some pretty significant water damage and we were really scared that the subfloor would have significant water damage. Luckily it was pretty minimal um, and I think it was probably just because this is a major like entry point into the house um, from the backyard which has a lake in it and so there was just a lot of water damage on those floors themselves and then obviously all of this adhesive that held them down was um, all over this floor so laying something directly over this was not really an option and it was bowing pretty significantly in the center. So obviously we needed to fix that because, um, well, one, you want a level floor, but two, it wasn't level with the transition from the living room. And we plan to do the same flooring continuously into the sunroom. Um, so yeah, that's what we had to do. Dustin then pulled out a piece of the insulation that looked to be kind of like, uh, like I had a spot on it and we did end up finding some rat poop. So that wasn't good, but luckily it wasn't like in every single one. Um, you'll see later what we do with the insulation just to make sure. But anyway, we also found that it was on a concrete slab and the rest of our house is on a crawl space. So this was undoubtedly an addition. And um, I think that it probably used to be a patio or like a porch, maybe even like a screened in porch that they then later converted into a sunroom. Okay, I know it looks like we're going pretty fast, uh, but this actually I think took us maybe like two days just to actually get the subfloor up. You may notice that we're wearing the same clothes though, and that's really just because we didn't want to get all of like the crusty dustiness all over like a bunch of our clothes. Anyway, um, yeah, highly underestimated the amount of time and money that this project would take. It is by far the most um, like unruly project I have ever tackled. And I'm proud to say that we, we do end up coming out on the other side, but let me tell you, this one, this one was worse than my primary bathroom renovation at the last house, which like, that one, that one was a, a real rough one for me. So yeah, we, we were putting this off for a long time, but I'm glad that I can say it's done now, although you will not see the done results in this video. And my friends, I wish I could say that this part right here was the hardest part about this project, but it is not. Leveling this out 
Oh, it tested my patience, but that is for a whole nother video, and you guys will definitely be seeing that next week. Um, but we got pretty much all the subfloor out, and then we needed to take out the insulation. We initially didn't think we were going to need to take out the insulation. It wasn't our plan, but once we saw that rat poop, we were like, listen, we are not taking any chances. We're gonna make sure that this is all like clean and good to go. And here is Dustin and I just fully contemplating, oh my gosh, what have we done? <laughs> we have, you know, gotten ourselves way in over our heads with this project. We don't know what to do, but you know what? With a little bit of time and a lot of Googling and watching YouTube tutorials, I'm telling you, you can learn how to do just about anything. So as much as we wanted to give up on this project and we started to panic, we kept going. Um, we did need to get like super close to the door to get some more of the plywood up, but um, that's okay. We ended up being able to do that. And then we cleaned and cleaned and cleaned for what felt like hours um, because we just wanted to make sure that when we put the new insulation down that everything was going to be not disgusting and not rat poopy. I guess that's a new adjective. I just made it up. So after everything was cleaned, I needed to make more of a mess. <laughs> um, I took off this transition strip, which I knew was just going to be um, temporary anyway. It was basically just to make sure that like, you know, nothing moved around in the sunroom or got under the floors while we were doing, uh, like before this project was happening. So at first I was like, okay, there's still this adhesive right here. And I tried to like sand it down and I could sand it down and it was making a difference, but there was also these like little nails in it. So I broke it up with a hammer and got basically most of it off. And then I sanded it down to be smooth later. Uh, but obviously I had to like clean all of that up. This transition point is, it needs to be super flat because I need to be able to like run the floors from room to room. So it'll be interesting to see how the floors actually lay over that. Um, but then I made some more cuts for this like little back panel and Dustin pulled those up. There were a lot of nails that we had to get out and he found that it was a lot easier to use like a few crowbars to kind of like shimmy stuff out, if that makes sense. Um, and of course, you know, his muscles, they helped. But yeah, it was uh, not too fun getting into the edges. I really need a jigsaw, so maybe I'm gonna put that on my Christmas list. Then Dustin pulled out that uh, last piece of insulation and threw it away. Uh, then I decided, okay, well, I need to see what the situation is like behind these walls to see how we're gonna have to like support the floor um, because obviously we had cut a bunch of that plywood, you know, to the edge and we wanted to make sure that like, you know, the windows weren't going to like cave in <laughs> or the whole thing wasn't gonna cave in. Uh, so I, Dustin and I, we just took off some of this drywall, which it, you know, it kind of confirmed that we just needed to put blocking under, which we needed to do anyway, but yeah. Also we did find stucco. So this was definitely an addition, like 100 million percent. I know I already said that, but we, we did find stucco on the inside of our house. Um, then I did the other side of, you know, that little transition, hit it with a hammer, cleaned it up, and then I went back and sanded it down. Now, there is this weird little gap still where it meets the other beam. So you'll see how I handle that next week. Um, and I hope that I handled it correctly. I would like to reiterate, I am not a professional and I'm just doing the best that I can. Then um, before we move on to what we do next week, I just measured between every single joist because none of them were the same distance. Uh, but that's where we're gonna leave it. Make sure you guys come back next week because this is a wild ride.